I wake up to everything I know either getting sold or wrecked or being taken over by people that I don't like. And they don't like me. And you know what's left out of all that? The Jets. And it's Tony nominee, Mike Feist. Here he is eating a salad. <laughs> Yes, and better Alex Boniello, as always. And hey. always. guys, what a huge lineup this is that we have today. <laughs> this is so exciting. I am such big fans of all of you. It is bananas, bonkers. Yeah. Uh, feeling is mutual. That's yes. very nice. Well, we, 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 we tend to begin every episode by going around and asking, why are you eligible for Broadway Jackbox? Mike <laughs> Mike? Mike Feist, why are you eligible for Broadway Jackbox? I think because I'm not. I think that's why I'm eligible is because <laughs> I've never played really. Yeah, this I, is this is a, Mike's first time being on a video call ever, I think. Yeah, it's true. I just I just figured out how to uh, take a call via uh, Zoom, I think the other day. No, um we would play we would play video games a lot backstage during Dear Evan Hansen because true. um well Alex and I were practically never on stage, so we just kind of. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, true. That's it's the reason. Great answer. answer. Where do I uh, relate to Riff? Uh, you know, one of the fun things about being an actor is finding those pieces that you really didn't kind of know existed uh, and exploring that, you know, um, tapping into different shades of your own personality and who you are. And uh, I, I honestly think, you know, for me, one of the most exciting things is, is that when you don't relate uh, at all, I, you, you can empathize, you can understand where that character is coming from. Um, and the challenge is, is to just uh, understand enough where you are that kind of person. Um, you know, that's the trick of it is to, to morph yourself to evolve, to change yourself in order to portray that. Do you both remember how old you were when you first saw West Side Story? I, I, I was young, I know that. I, I might have been like three or four years old, really, because it, it was one of those films for me uh, that made me want to move to New York and be an actor. Why, they're on a basketball court, how come they're not actually playing basketball? But otherwise, <laughs> absolutely <laughs> loving it as a kid. And uh, Of course you would so wonder cool. that too. Because <laughs> Ansel, Ansel, Ansel uh, was playing basketball and, and might have slightly injured himself during the rehearsal process playing basketball. And uh, Steven came to him and was like, you have to stop. And he's like, okay, okay. And he's like, do you promise? He's like, yeah, 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 I promise. I won't play basketball. He's like, but do you pinky promise? And he's like, oh. <laughs> He made me pinky promise that Steven I wasn't gonna- Steven Spielberg made a pinky promise he wasn't gonna play basketball. <laughs> that I kept my promise. You did. I did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go. I'm good at <laughs> Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna miss about Mike. He's a freak. Mike. All right, come on, Tommy, don't cry. I know, I, I don't get to Don't cry. Him, no. Say something! <laughs> I'm gonna miss him so much. Yeah, okay. I miss Mike when he's All right. in India. I hate Mike. Right? Hate Mike. There's <laughs> several hate Mikes, too. And you know what I noticed about you? Mm -hmm. I've got five stories of you beating up people. What's, I know you was that abusive. Yeah. People pop you popping people on stage, going full out and oh, yeah. bruising people, and yeah. I thought you were so gentle. I was wrong. Okay, so okay. <laughs> okay. So, so anybody in the ladies, any of the girls, these have anything? Well, he's like the coolest dude in the building. So yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 this is true. true. So he hasn't beat e either one of you. You haven't come out with any no, bruises. No. I'm just checking because honey. Even though he's only 21. Yeah, he's like two. He's, he's a, Yes, he is. All right, so I'll get this love fest. I'll leave you to it. I'm gone. I'm gone. Good, good one. Good one. See ya. All right, where's the? Okay, I'm gonna be professional, and then in a little bit, and I'd be like, okay, so Indiana Jones. Like, yeah, totally. <laughs> though, right? Like that's like, absolutely the case. Day two of shooting, I asked him. I was like, okay, you gotta tell me. Like, come on, <laughs> give me the dirt. You know, like tell me the stories. And it would be like that because he's such a. At the end of the day, he's just a big nerd about this stuff too, and he loves doing it and he loves telling those stories too because you know they're they are special experiences no you're right he is a nerd i, I remember asking him, i was like yeah. what's your favorite john williams score that you like he, yeah, ever, yeah, yeah, he yeah. was like 
He was like Star Wars. And I was like, oh, like not your movie. <laughs> no, for sure. 100. At the end of the day, he just loves this. And it's so like genuine. There's nothing else about it. And he just wants to share that. He's wonderful. Uh, so what did you ask him? Day two, I asked him about uh, the scene in Raiders where uh, Harrison Ford, you know, is supposed to fight this guy with the twirling sword and he just pulls his gun out and shoots him. And I was like, you gotta tell me because there's that famous story. And so he told me that, you know, it was the night before and Harrison had come down with food poisoning and kind of told Steven, I can only give you an hour because I am sick. And Steven jokingly kind of said, an hour, what do you want to do? Just pull your gun out and shoot the guy? And he said, that's kind of what I was thinking. And then he did this great Harrison Ford impression. I'll never forget because Steven was really nervous about Indiana Jones killing a man. Uh, and he said, I don't know. Do you think we could get away with it? And he like did this thing. He like did jazz hands and he's like, it's only a movie. <laughs> and seeing Steven Spielberg do an impersonation of Harrison Ford was really awesome. <laughs> was the experience of being directed by Steven Spielberg anything like what you imagined it would be? And what, if anything, surprised you about it? Oh, can I start? Yeah. Okay. Uh, it was not what I had imagined it to be. I was actually very nervous going into it. I was thinking that this was going to be um, an overbearing director. Um, I thought that this was going to be a, a Hollywood uh, production of it all, very produced. Uh, I thought that I was going to have to just kind of show up and be a prop. Um, you know, that has happened in the past, unfortunately, as an actor, yeah. you're kind of just say, hey, wear that, stand there. Um, and uh, it went totally beyond that. The truth is, is that Steven was the most giving and kind and um, collaborative um, director I might have ever worked with. Uh, he let the reins off and just let me run wild. And he allowed me to step in, do the work, give him stuff to work with so he could go and morph and make this thing what it is. Uh, it, it was the best experience artistically. The place setting of uh, this area in New York and this being these people's homes and really what's rubble all around them. And on the jet side, at least, these guys didn't have any real families other than the boys around them. Mm -hmm. And specific to Riff, the only other person that he really had was Tony. And I think what's amazing about this particular story is this love story, if I'm being biased. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying in the way <laughs> um, but this but this uh truly codependent relationship of here is this guy who does not like himself and is trying to actually better himself and change and riff's inability to see that recognize that or love him enough to let him go until the end unfortunately and i that's all was written and conceived through Tony, quite frankly. And that was the discussion that we had and the discussion that Tony and I had. And, and that's, that's really what interested me the most was this kind of push and pull that these two had. Watch this, guys. We're gonna wave. There he is! <laughs> Guys, Mike Vice is waving through a window. <laughs> Look at him. Happy trails, Mike Feist. You're the best. <laughs> what a jerk. <laughs> All right. an interesting question I, I think uh, maybe like the most me thing that I probably brought to this was uh my um mischievousness in a little bit <laughs> it's kind of like you know I like to you know kind of mess with people here and there and yeah there's a little bit of that yeah uh -huh. Well, you did such a great job. I, I was reading an interview with Russ Tamblin, the original uh, riff, and he said, you'll never get over being a jet. 
So my question to both of you is, A, is that true? And B, what is that thing about being a jet that you probably will never get over? Mike, I'll start with you. You know, as we're doing these interviews, we have actually been making paper airplanes this entire <laughs> time. <laughs> Could you not? So does that mean um, we're boring? Are we boring? No, no, no. <laughs> On the contrary, it's no. inspiring. Okay. You know, we're Dear Evan Hansen, off Broadway uh, in New York, and uh, Michael Greif, who's the director of that, is very good friends with Tony Kushner, and I think this was maybe previews or something and tony had come to see the show and he came backstage and we were introduced and michael had said oh he's working on the new west side story and i was like oh that's crazy cool well best of luck and that was really it anything similar with the jets and the sharks to sort of create that divide between the actors some jedi mind trick things <laughs> Probably. Um, yeah, there's. Probably. I think there's probably like some weird things that we're just realizing. Like, hang on a second, you guys are planning that. No, just remember doing the play and going back. You know, going to work that night and telling my castmates like, I get to audition in front of Steven Spielberg tomorrow. Like, I was very excited about that. I wasn't, you know, thinking like, oh, I'm gonna book this thing i was like i get to audition in front of the man himself i'm very much looking forward to that and i had met steven once before he had came back stage you know for um dear evan hansen when we were on broadway and he was lovely uh he he made a joke about you know loving a ghost story uh you know with that show and me and so you know but it was honestly the whole time it wasn't ever something that i had thought was going to come into fruition i just wanted to snap you know, <laughs> yeah. that was it. That's all I wanted to do. <laughs> You're a great snapper. Thank though. you. Mm. I had a lot of practice. No, I grew up with the film. <laughs> I grew up with the film. I've seen the stage production. Uh, you know, uh, yeah, I'm familiar. <laughs> <laughs> familiar with the snaps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you have any moment like that with Riff uh, where, you know, you kind of alter something that he was supposed to do or anything that you can think of? I think what it was, it, it, working and shooting on the film, it really was just, uh, just a collaborative kind of thing. It was a give and take uh, where, you know, I'd come up with something and from what Tony brought and then Steven would add a layer to that. And then we would just kind of keep doing this, 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 this. And it just kind of became, we just played, you know, we just kind of kept like doing this thing and he was really open to that and he he welcomed it and he wanted that uh and i think you know someone else in his position wanting to tell this story in particular um would want to hold on more would want to uh you know not be so uh, uh giving with the reins a little bit because of insecurities or nerves or whatever but he was fully let go and let us play, which allowed him to play, and it just did this really wonderful thing. I'm having Thanksgiving early. What about you, Mike Feist? Um, uh, yeah? Yeah. You got your turkey. I you got, got, some got some turkey, cranberry, cranberry sauce. sauce, of course, some gravy. Turkey stuffing. Sweet potato, mashed sweet potatoes, and my sweet bun. Of course. Uh, how's it tasting so far? Oh, wow. So, you know, we're all, you know, taking our time here, you know, so most of our oh, plates oh, going. And then Mr. Mike Feist is completely <laughs> done. done. We've been here for maybe five minutes. Oh, yeah. And he's done. Are you gonna get another plate, Mike? No way, man. Please no? do, you that do it. I can, I got a show. <laughs> I'm full. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Ian? I am very full. You deserve it. I just <laughs> spilled on myself. <laughs> so, <laughs> we're to the point where we're kind of delirious now because we ate so much. Clay's still going strong. Nice, Clay. Look at, I'm going to get it all. Uh, yeah, That's how you this, do it. this is, I mean, Mike and I kind of figured it out. Way to go, Ohio. Oh, O-H. I-O. That's right.